Here's a story of nightmare terror, of screams in the night, of a ghostly vengeance that came up from the sea to wreck its fury on a man. It's a story of today, but its evil roots lie buried in time, back two centuries. The time, 1750. The place, the rock-bound New England coast. A gay betrothal party draws to a close. You're a strange man, Squire Aram. It's no secret that you loved the girl and lost, yet here you are drinking to the happy pair. And why not? By gad, I like Philip. He's the right man for her. But deep within a twisted and hate-filled mind. Pah! If I can't have her, no one can. Death to that young fool! As the guests depart. I'm worried, Philip. The night is so dark. Why not ride with one of the guests? No, darling. I'd rather walk. I know every foot of the shore road. Minutes later, where the road skirts the sea. Here he comes. Aram will pay us handsomely for this night's work. Aye, but I like it not. We've got him. The rope, get it around him. <laughs> Help! Grim moments later. Wait, I'm going with you. Sasquire Aram. I intend to make sure you keep our bargain. Before you heave him over, I'm going to have a look at his face. I'm curious to see how much courage he has left. <laughs> You're a cool one, Squire. Aram, so you planned this. What are you going to do? Cast you into the sea. It will do you no good to shout for help, Philip. We are miles from shore. You devil! It's useless to struggle. And she won't wait for you to return from the sea. Looks like I've won, eh? <laughs> Goodbye, Philip. Too bad. But there's nothing you can do. I will return, Aram. I will return. A curse on you and your house. Now and forever! Bend to those oars, fool. We've seen the last of him. Is it your pay you're worrying about? I... I want no pay. When a man goes down into the sea, ranting and raving, there's blood on the moon. If I take your gold, he'll come for me too. I want no part of the curse he's put on ye. A week later, Squire Adam is stricken with strange illness. Salt. My mouth. Choked with salt. Bring me something to drink that has not the taste of the sea. Strange. He has had nothing to eat or drink. He cannot swallow. He is gone. He had no fever, yet his body is hideously wasted. And as he died, his eyes grew bright and wild, as through some great fear had come into his soul. There's a storm at sea. The casement blew open. Ah, uh, there's something out there. A century passes over Aram House, like a great dark bird of the sea. The year is now 1850. Generations of the Aram family have paid for the curse with their lives. Squire Aram's great-grandniece lives there now. Her father was clawed to death. Brrr. Let's get back to the inn, man. 1948, and once more, the old house blazes with a light and gaiety. Mmm, that sea air smells good. This place has been boarded up for years, but making a resort hotel of it is a swell idea, Sylvia. I hear it's supposed to be haunted. What a way to start a honeymoon, Roger. Light and gaiety, yes, but it is said that the sea is still restless around this bleak dwelling as the young couple enters. It is said that the ghost of a man long dead paces the house, paces in silent fury, while the wind howls dismally. Or is it just the moonlight weaving patterns of terror for inside, we find a very different world. 
Nothing scary about that dance orchestra, Sylvia. Or the guests. They're having the time of their lives. Oh, here comes the proprietor. We're not doing so badly, are we? Confidentially, I bought this hotel for a song, but I expect to make a good thing out of it. You've done that already, Mr. Tennant. The ghost is outside that window! Roger, I'm going after that ghastly thing. Whatever it is. I'll go with you, Ken. Look, Roger, let's separate. I'll take the shore road, and you can keep to the top of the cliff. Never thought I'd go ghost hunting on my wedding night. On the shore road, a moment later. This place is as spooky as a cemetery at midnight. Those big flat stones look just like grave markers. Help me! Drawn by his friend's screams. He's... he stopped breathing. This is horrible. Later, Roger returns to Adam House. Roger, where did you go? Where's Ken? He... he was clawed to death, Sylvia. My best friend, killed by a ghost. Later that night, in John Tennant's office. The guests are all leaving. Can't say I blame them, but you know what it means. I'm afraid I do, John. It means I'll lose every cent I put in this place. The picture's not as bad as that, Mr. Tennant. I've persuaded half the guests to stay. Don't believe we've met. I'm Stephen Carew. As an antiquarian, I can assure you that the Aram ghost is grimly real. I can't explain it. No one can. I saw my best friend die. I'm staying on till I get to the truth. A little later. I just met an interesting character in the tenant's office. He's an antiquarian, and he takes ghosts seriously. I told him I didn't like the unsolved mysteries. Please, Roger, don't put yourself in danger. You're all I've got. Steady now. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm the guy you married, remember? The lucky guy. In the still of the night. Claude, footprints in the sand. Antiquarian. Takes a ghost seriously. What's that? The ghost. There's no mistaking it. It must have sent a boulder crashing. It's an unusually fine night for a showdown. What? Where did he go? Was it because he couldn't sleep? Or did he? I've got to find him! Roger! Terra shadowed instants later. Oh, where is he? Ah! Roger, help! This is the payoff, you devil. Get back, I've got a gun. Get back, you fool. Stephen Carew, the antiquarian. Then, then there was no ghost. Yes, I'm Carew, but my mother's family bore a different name. Aram. I'm the last of the Arams. I could not see the mansion of my ancestors get dragged into the mud. A common hotel. I disguised myself with luminous paint, wore steel-tipped gloves to terrify the guest. I killed your friend when he recognized me. Now I shall kill you, ghost. Baha! <laughs> Got you in the shoulder, eh? Good! I've got five shots left! Suddenly, out of the blackness, a ghostly arm. A moment later, in silence as chill as death. Roger! Look there! You can see the marks of Carew's shoes. He was struggling in those bare wet prints, the tracks of the real ghost who dragged an imposter to his watery grave. He didn't believe the ghost existed, but it killed him. As Raja and Sylvia returned to the hotel. Sylvia, one of my ancestors was the brother of a man supposedly murdered by old Squire Aram in 1750. Did that murderer man's ghost help me? A remote descendant went out over the last of the Arams? If so, his vengeance is satisfied. The end.